recognize any of this, it's your country. Big, strong, rugged. Its warm heart beating time for the rest of the world. These are the cities and towns you live in. Through these ports flows the commerce that makes the cities live and breathe. They are the gateways through which we reach out to the people living in the free nations of the world. These ports are the nerve centers. Through them, the hostile world could strike at us and crack our shell of protection. This is sabotage, the big one, the one everybody fears. No, it didn't happen here, but it could someday if we're not constantly on the alert every minute of every day and night in every city of the land. This too is sabotage, the little one the planned carelessness of a subversive. A deliberate covert attack by an agent of the enemy. Sabotage that can eat away at our transportation systems that serve the industries which are the backbone of our country. And this is where it could begin, at the seaports. This is where bombs and other tools and materials of sabotage could be smuggled into the country, placed in the normal channels of commerce, and sent on their destructive way to any city, factory, or warehouse in the land. We know now that an enemy can attempt to sneak crippling atomic or other sabotage weapons into this country in almost any conceivable form. A bag of tapioca, a crate of melons, a small package, a suitcase can conceal some small vital component of a sabotage device. So we must make certain that no person, shipment or vessel entering our ports has hostile intent. You gentlemen are the Port Advisory Council of this port. Representatives of industry, government and labor. And it's your responsibility to alert the dock owners, the longshoremen, the people of your city. To rouse them and pull them into a team to guard against sabotage. And that's where the United States Coast Guard comes in. 
We're charged by the government with port security, with putting a shell of protection around our nation. Now, we're the smallest of the services. We have done some big jobs before, and we can do this one. But we need your help. Each one of you must play his part in doing that job. No one service can do the job alone. But with your help, we can look after these breathing points of our country, through which we get important raw materials vital to industry, and through which we send finished products to the rest of the world, helping to keep the peace. Protecting the port areas against sabotage is protecting the peace of the world. It's a big job, a constant one. And there are many things for you to do. Certain jobs the Coast Guard does alone, like harbor entrance patrol. You're a seaman on harbor entrance patrol. It doesn't look like much, and it's pretty routine. You're out here to identify all ships. Most of them, you just look over. Sometimes you stop one and send it to an anchorage, away from the crowded part of the port, a ship that may be carrying sabotage material. This is a Coast Guard vessel. Reduce your speed. Proceed as directed. Prepare to take boarding party aboard. Set your course at 036, true. Anchor when buoy number four is abeam. Proceed at five knots. Repeat, five knots. Now you pick up a radio telephone and you call in another pair of Coast Guard eyes to watch from above, to make certain no equipment or no materials of sabotage are quietly thrown overboard before you find them. On the way to Anchorage, you contact a Coast Guard boarding tug. The men on this tug will carry out the search while you go back to your patrol station. Stand by to take line. Lower a ladder. We're going to board you. U.S. Customs is right there with you. They've got an interest in this job, too. And so have they, maybe. You bring along scientific detection devices to help in the search.
where you can't see or feel, these instruments will see and feel for you. You wonder if the men on the foreign ship watch you, because they know that too. So you search, you follow routine. You move all over the ship. Every corner, every room, Searching, wandering. Once in a while, the common, ordinary, everyday human feeler finds something the electronic one missed. atomic fish. But this time it's just a kid's comic book, hidden away by a grown-up sailor. Next time? Well, next time another ship, another search. Routine, day after day, week after week, to keep our ports safe and secure. Yes, our boats and men are out there, checking the ships before they get into port. But once they arrive alongside your docks, you, the rest of the port security team, must take over. One important way in which you ship and pier owners can protect your port is to make sure that the stevedoring companies know what kind of cargo they're handling. If any of it is on the dangerous and hazardous commodity list, the stevedores must instruct their longshoremen as to safe methods for working it. Another way you protect your port is to post required signs. But no matter how well you mark your piers, you must check on them constantly. You must make certain your peers have keen, alert, well-trained guards who patrol them, checking, keeping all unauthorized people away so the shell of protection can stay intact every minute of every day. The readiness of protective equipment must also be checked because the life of the men who work on the pier and the existence of the pier itself depend on it. You must also be able to get to the equipment quickly and easily. Fire is one of the big hazards on the waterfront, so all markings must be clear and easy to read. An important part of the daily routine is to keep fires from happening. Refuse left by careless people can cause damage.
And you can't take chances with a leaky drum of oil. Nor can you be lax about enforcing no smoking regulations. Careless and thoughtless acts can cause damage equal to deliberate sabotage. guard, these signs and all other markings on dangerous cargo are like an alphabet, the ABCs of safety. The guard must learn them, because knowing them tells him immediately the degree of danger that surrounds him. Knowing the signs and constantly checking to see if cargo is stowed properly helps minimize the danger of accident and sabotage. On enclosed piers, the guard must make sure there's at least two feet of clear and open space between cargo piles and the walls of the pier. Cargo should not be tiered higher than 12 feet, and the top of the pile must not be closer than three feet from the overhead beams of the pier. A guard must also be on the lookout for any hazardous stacking. A main aisle at least 20 feet wide along the entire length of the pier must be kept clear so that fire trucks can enter if it becomes necessary. There must also be a wide separation between general cargo and inflammable, combustible, or corrosive materials. If this is not done, you leave the door open to saboteurs. If you do a poor job of guarding the piers, 
If you, the owners of waterfront facilities, or the operators of stevedoring companies, or the longshoremen themselves, are not alert, if you don't hold to the regulations, what's to prevent anybody from arranging the cargo any way he sees fit? To carry out any kind of scheme he may have in mind? Negligence, owners, guards, longshoremen, simply not bothering can cause the same kind of damage as sabotage. We can protect these facilities if you do your part. The Coast Guard is doing everything in its power to help you men on the waterfront protect lives, property, and the nation. The job of guarding against sabotage is more than protecting the piers against destruction from fire. It is protecting the piers against the wrong kind of people. When a guard works any place long enough, faces get familiar. Certainly he can't look into everybody's mind to see what's kicking around inside. But he can spot check. A port security card is identification. It helps to protect all of us from a traitor who might be posing as a longshoreman. Each worker should make certain his fellow worker has proper identification. It just isn't smart to work dangerous cargo with anyone who doesn't hold a port security card. In this way, the longshoreman becomes a part of the shell of protection. In this way, he not only protects the port, but himself as well. This is particularly true when handling explosives or any cargo destined for our military forces or the Mutual Defense Assistance Program. For these also are targets for espionage agents and saboteurs. As a group, the longshoremen provide a few thousand extra eyes and ears, assisting in the constant fight to prevent sabotage of our port facilities. The longshoreman on or off duty sees many things because he is on every part of every pier. It is his duty to report anything suspicious that he sees. The menace exists for the public, just as it exists for those of us in the Coast Guard or those who work on the piers. City dwellers, office workers, housewives, service personnel must be constantly alert, must report anyone distributing hostile propaganda. Mechanics, machinists, workers in factories should be alert to suspicious acts that may wreck our industrial potential. Fishermen, coastal workers, people on vacation should be on the lookout for any evidence of surreptitious landings. The farmer, the hunter, people who live in isolated areas, should report any evidence indicating parachute landings. Truckers, motorists can watch for and report any unauthorized use of radio transmitters. Suspicious chartering of airplanes for flights over nearby restricted areas should also be reported.
so that Americans everywhere, going about their daily business, can give us a few more million eyes with which to strengthen the peace and security of our nation. For people carry the seeds of sabotage, and they must be watched and checked, just like the cargo on the piers, or the fire hazards, or the ships in the harbor. And it's not an extra job for the public. It should be part of their daily routine. Only in that way can we keep a strong shell of protection around the nation in which we live. So the inside stays clean and safe and free. The menace of sabotage is constant. Our ports are the nerve centers of the world. Every person loyal to the United States should make it a part of his daily job to guard against sabotage, to work safely, to know the men they work with, to keep their eyes sharp for signs of trouble. So this will never happen. Your families, the country, the free world depend on you to keep these gateways open. It's part of your life to guard against sabotage.